welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to another hot episode of a very special podcast. This is a podcast where you talk about all of your favorite TV series from yesteryear. And I'm your boy, Patrick M. Dunn, and I'm joined here by Cat Halstead. And together we're um, drinking coffee and talking about TV shows. Uh, maybe something else today, but we'll get there. We'll get there. You, you didn't call me Cat Halstead the author, and I, that, that just seems weird. Did I not? Did I not do that? You didn't. You oh. just called me Cat Halstead. It sounded so weird. You're going to have to listen to it on the playback. Well, uh, truth be told, this is our second time recording the intro because uh, Kat's stopped recording and we had some fire content that uh, you're going to miss out on, hopefully. Right, I'm so sad. <laughs> it was very organic and uh, and fun, but I don't know, maybe we'll get to it, maybe we'll not. No. Good conversation, good conversation. Yeah, anyway, um, Yeah. welcome back. It's been a minute. It's been a hot, hot minute. Christmas time, he thinks? Yeah, I think we, we did, what, one Christmas episode and then... We got busy. We didn't get to do Jason Bateman January. Yeah, sorry, Jason. Uh, we, next year, next year. Hang tight. Maybe we'll do like Jason Bateman July or something. We'll like just change it up, mix up, mix up the stats. Yeah, Kat started a new job. She's driving a bus or something. I forget what you said you did. I'm not driving a bus. <laughs> something with a bus. <laughs> I work with kids though. You work with kids and you chaperone them on a bus and you drop them off at their house and make their mom sign a disclosure that they got back to the house. <laughs> That was what we talked about before, right? Yeah, <laughs> All right. pretty much, yeah. We just did a um, a cliff's note. <laughs> no, seriously, I have what? There's one little girl where I always have to be like, hold on, girl. You can't just run to get on the van. I gotta have mom sign off. Otherwise, it's kidnapping. Uh, it's not like back in the day, like when we were kids and it was just, you got off at the bus stop and you walked like three miles back to your house and maybe you made it home. Yeah. Like maybe there was that one kid in the neighborhood you never saw again. Lobo. Shout out to Lobo. Where are you? <laughs> No, like, uh, literally, I go up to these doors and, like, I ring the bell and I'm like, hi, I'm here for, insert child name, and then the parents sign these two sheets, and then I take them into the van and I buckle them into their little car seats. Do you ever, like, flip open your paper again because you forget which kid you're dropping off and you're like, I have a <laughs> Charles, I mean, Susan here. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Thankfully. Because usually we have, like, it's all, like, set up in order of who, which kid gets dropped off when. Oh, uh, it's pre-planned. Yeah. Set up. What, what if there's, like, a detour? Like, what if, uh, I don't know, they're doing some construction and the bus has to go, like, another route? What would you do then? Uh, then you'd be all thrown off and you're like, I don't know if you're Susan or Charlie. I mean, I know which kids go to which house nine times out of ten. Ever get, like, a um, like a drunk mom or something? Like, like you know, a stay-at-home mom that's just, like, been totally, like, swilling wine all afternoon? I cannot comment on that. All right. Then that means yes. All right. <laughs> Thumbs up emoji right there. She just winked. <laughs> well, for the uh, <laughs> listeners at home who can't see it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's been a hot minute since we've last uh, cruised these pod streets. For real. We, the last time we, the last time we did this, we were talking about, uh, we need to do more like musical things. Because I think we were talking about somebody and we're like we should do more music well yeah because like we got onto some tangent about like cheryl crow and yes like some other stuff and then cheryl crow pops up on tiktok like a week later yeah did, did, are you part of cheryl talk is she in your um rotation yes we gotta talk about this we gotta you gotta do a, a sidebar and do like cheryl crow hour again because well because like remember we found out on like the last recording that she's got like a new album coming out this year so it kind of makes sense it does. She's got to. She's got to amp it up. She's got to amp up the promo. She doesn't want to pay for marketing anymore. She's like, you know what? I can just get my um, iPhone Pro Max. Just put it on one of those little um well, stands and just like I don't know, record myself doing. All I want to do is have some fun on an accordion. Here's the thing: like music promotion is so different now than it was ten years ago. Like everything, like the promoting everything is so different now than it was ten years ago. It's not about it's not about selling an album anymore. It's about uh, I don't even know what it's about anymore. To be honest with you, certain artists are gonna like you get like a Cheryl Crow or a Paula Cole or someone like that. They can come onto TikTok, play a song, and that's chill, and that gets them the buzz. And then you have other artists who like Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift can post something, and her fans are going to think it means. 500 other things. And I say this as a Swifty. Okay. I say that as a Swifty. There will be like 500 different theories about what one picture means and what it's saying is happening. Yeah, she's very cryptic. <laughs> and then you get 
Then you get like in sync. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> Dude, I'm wearing my in sync shirt. You knew this was coming. You knew deep down this was coming. Uh, Where like there's radio silence, and then all of a sudden there's this trickle. And like these little hints, like, oh, all of a sudden they have a TikTok. Why does NSYNC need a TikTok if NSYNC's not a thing anymore? And then, boom, song with the Trolls movie. And then, boom, song on the Justin Timberlake album. And then you have, uh, this is going to segue into what we're talking about, kind of. Then you have artists like Natalie Maines, who for years has just been doing covers on her Instagram page that I've just been following forever. I don't know. Just just real great. And I, I never was a Natalie Maines fan for the... Pretty much my whole life, and guess what? Were you a fan of the chicks? Uh, no, <laughs> not at no. all. <laughs> that's right, because I made you and Steven a country music playlist on Spotify, and I have not even listened to one fraction of a second of it. <laughs> I don't even have Spotify, which I don't understand why you wouldn't have because it's amazing. I, I have um, Apple Music, it comes with my phone, like when I have to download another app, it's, just, it's already included. <laughs> It's there. It's out of the box. I just, all I gotta do is just tap a button. It's the same thing. <laughs> I literally have a country music. It's th- almost four hours long. And it starts, like, the first song on the playlist is by the Chicks. So we're, we're actually gonna call them the Chicks, right? We're, we're, we're going there? That, okay. that, that's, their, that's their name now. We can't, we can't use their burn name? No. Alright, because I still call them the Dixie Chicks. I'm just gonna throw this out there. I... I I can't get used to, they've been the Dixie Chicks my whole life, and then now they're, all of a sudden, they're the Chicks, which doesn't sound appealing to me. I don't know why. Like, it doesn't have, like, the same, um... No, I get it. I get it. It's... Dixie Chicks rolls off the tongue better, I think. It really does. It's got this... You kind of get an idea. Like, you have an idea of what the sound is gonna be. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. The Chicks doesn't give you that same like oh this is what i'm gonna get no it's like when um like it almost seems like that it's like a new version of it because it's like when jackson five were just the jacksons for a while mm-hmm. <laughs> you know i still call them the jackson five i'm not gonna call them the yeah Jackson. like who the fuck is gonna do that who has time who has time to learn a new name no one no one is ever gonna just so they're now known as the chicks um we're kind of going back in rename a thing what's what's that who's that other band that changed their name and it like turned out it was already like the name of somebody <laughs> it's this big like lawsuit um lady antebellum became lady a lady a and now like i look at it and i just think that they're ripping off lady gaga for some reason like they just dropped the g-a-g <laughs> they dropped the gag <laughs> i mean so it confuses me i'm older now it's like harder for me to read so oh my gosh there's more thought process involved yeah, so um, we're doing a song, Goodbye Earl. Yes. Blew my mind that this came out in the year 2000. Just gonna throw, like, I thought this was more recent than that. You did? <laughs> yes. No. Oh my God. Like, have I, to- have I told you the first time I heard this song? Uh, No, but you should tell our listeners and myself this thrilling tale. So it is, I want to say it's like Labor Day weekend, maybe. No. Okay. <laughs> Late August, early September, Lilith Fair, 1999. Oh. Um, me and my best friend Jessica went. My dad got me tickets for my 18th birthday. You went to Lilith Fair? Hold on. I never knew this. Yes, I went to Lilith Fair. God, what was it like? Tell me everything about it. <laughs> it was it was awesome. Okay, so we had um, Monica performed. Oh, like the boy is mine, Monica? Yes. Okay. Was Brandy there? No. <laughs> Uh, Monica performed the Dixie Chicks. Okay. Uh, performed and they performed "Goodbye Earl," and this is long before the album got released because it's night. It's like late summer, nineteen ninety nine, and we heard it for the first time, and it was wild to hear this song live for the first time. Oh yeah, and the uh, heyday. <laughs> um, I didn't know this was a cover song either. This is like a, yeah. another artist song, which, which... I didn't. I also didn't know. So we're learning a lot today. Or I am anyway. Um, but yeah, so we, <clears throat> my best friend and I were there. We got to see Monica, <clears throat> the Dixie Chicks. Um, who else was there? The Indigo Girls were there, but we didn't kind of, we didn't really care. Um, Cheryl Crow. Okay. okay. Uh, Sarah McLaughlin. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm trying to think. There was a there was another one. Oh, who was it? I have to look Melissa up. Melissa Etheridge. No. <laughs> uh, um, who's the one? Um, 
Natalie and Bruglia. Maybe. I'm just trying to think. Um, who's the one? Uh, Meredith Brooks, maybe. Maybe. I'm. I'm actually like looking up to see who played. Um. I'm just throwing names out there. <laughs> Courtney Love. <laughs> Hold on, because I actually, I did look this up recently. So we had Indigo Girls, um, Monica, The Chicks, uh, Tara McLean, who I don't remember. Uh, who's the Who's the other one? That Liz Fair. <laughs> Liz Fair wasn't there. Ah, but um, but yeah, Monica's definitely there. Sarah McLaughlin, Cheryl Crow, The Dixie Chicks. Um, Indigo Girls, and then a bunch of other artists who, like, I don't recognize their names now, but I'm sure, like, I kind of knew who they were then. Probably. Probably. Um, if you were at the 1999 Labor Day weekend Lilith Fair, uh, send us a tweet at Very Podcast. It was Sunday, August 29th, 1999. All right, yeah, send us a tweet at Very Podcast, and if you remember the lineup, let us know, and we'll give you bonus points if you still have the ticket stub. And snap a pic to us. We'll we'll appreciate that. We'll put it on the, um... Instagram page, which we don't have the password for anymore. Oh my god. I wonder if I still have that somewhere. Um, I think I can access the Instagram. I can't access the Twitter. <laughs> I can get on one, you can get on the other, so. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I thought this song came out in, like, 2009, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh my god, that is amazing that you thought that. Well, I'm gonna throw this out there. The Dixie Chicks were formed in 1989, initially, like, in their first incarnation, which I didn't know. Yeah. And I didn't hear of them till like, I don't know, 2003-ish, whenever they were, like, in this, um, you know, when they, like, shit-talked uh, W, old George W. Bush. Yeah. And they were, like, on the cover of Entertainment Weekly, and I'm like, the Dixie Chicks? Who are these chicks? And that was it. Like, they were on my radar at that point, but I never heard a song or anything. And then I think, like, six years after that, I think I... I think I seen the video like in a clip on like VH1 or something. I don't know. Like somewhere. It was like, I love the 2000s or something. Probably. Oh I don't God. know. And it hit my radar. So other than this song, I could not tell you another song they have. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you could. Like I. No, I looked. I like went through their their playlist and I even like sampled a few songs. I'm like, I kind of know that title. And then no, I didn't know it. <laughs> not even not ready to make nice. Um, No. What about their landslide cover? Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Like, because I think that's, is that just Natalie Maines, though? No, that's all of them. Oh, okay. Well, then I've heard that. But do you know what is my best description that I've read of Goodbye, Earl? What? Is, is, and this is exactly what I thought <laughs> without me knowing this was written down somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's described as a cross between fried green tomatoes and Thelma and Louise. <laughs> And that's literally what I thought when I like heard the song. I'm like, this is kind of like fried green tomatoes and uh, Thelma and Louise. And then I just read this right now. Okay, that total that that totally makes sense, a hundred percent. It tracks. It, you know, it could have been on the Thelma and Louise soundtrack for all I know, like the original version of it. <laughs> Actually, it isn't because I have the Thelma and Louise soundtrack, so or I did have it anyway. That that totally tracks. Um. Yeah. So the story is about um. Wanda? Is that her name in the uh, song? Wanda? We have Mary Ann and Wanda, who were best friends. They like, grew up together. They did everything together. They made up dance routines in their basement, that kind of thing. They like did each other's you know, hair. They were the besties of besties. Yeah. They, um, they played MASH together <laughs> at school. You know, they're both members of the 4-H club and both active in the FFA. Yeah. What is a 4-H club, by the way? That's like, a, it's, um... It's like a farming like thing, a right? farming club. Usually, like, they raise some kind of, like, animal and then show it at, like, the local fair and... Like a pig or a swine of some sort. Something like that. I don't know. I was never a member of 4-H. I was never a member of FFA, so... Yeah. A lot of initials. Marianne. Is that her name? You said Marianne? Marianne's the one who left town. Yeah, she left town. She skipped That was town. Lauren Holly in the video. Yeah, I, I saw... I forgot... Actually, I didn't even know. I did not know that Lauren Holly was in this, and I was watching this, and I was like, where has Lauren Holly been? And then I went on her IMDb, and, like, she is steadily acting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like, she has literally been in everything that I've never seen for the last, like, 35 years. <laughs> everything I haven't seen. I love that. I love that. Well, like, you, you know, like I'll screw up the list. It was like, I saw that she was on, like, Designated Survivor, that, like, post-24 key for Sutherland show, and I was like, oh, yeah, I wanted to watch that. Never watched it, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, she was in it. She had a role. She's in, like, a lot of TV shows. She does a lot of, like, TV movies. She does, she does a lot of, like, character work. 
And mm -hmm. I'm scrolling through the list and I was like, I am aware of 90% of these movies and I've seen zero of them. <laughs> Not even one. <laughs> Not even like half a second or like watched like a trailer on Netflix. Literally the only thing I know her from is Dumb and Dumber and like being married to Jim Carrey for like two years. Uh, you don't remember her from Picket Fences? Or did you not watch Picket Fences? I did watch Picket Fences, but all I remember for some reason is Lara Flynn Boyle. I feel like that's wrong. No, not Lara Flynn Boyle. That, she was Twin Peaks. Um, the, who's the other girl? Um, Holly Marie Combs. I knew it was someone with three names. Yeah. One who looks like Nev Campbell, but it's not Nev Campbell. And I thought they were the same person for a really long time. That's a... Uh... Who? Who's that? Holly Marie Combs and Nev Campbell. I thought they were the same person for a little bit. Ooh, I need to do a side by side. Hold on a second. <laughs> like, are you talking like now or way back in the day? No, like way back. All right, let's do. They look very. They had that same look. Harley Marie Combs, especially like early Julia Salinger before she was Sydney Prescott. Oh yeah, you, you know what? There's a um. <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I got a link to a Reddit post, and it's um actually comparing this so <laughs> see <laughs> and the picture they use is like pretty um pretty on point so yeah uh, never thought that yeah. you know never even never even thought that but now that you mentioned it, i've never seen them together at the same time so you know who would know the truth rose mcgowan you know what that's how she gets um how they get double salary probably we should listen to uh let's be claire shannon doherty's podcast to see if she brings it up when she's not busy shit talking Melissa Milano. <laughs> oh, I hate Alyssa Milano. All right. Um, what else? Uh, so yeah, so the Dixie Chicks slash the Chicks, uh, they were under the uh, the eye of America's scorn for a while. Uh, people hated them. They were banned from the radio. Yes. Not just because of this song, but because of their opposing views of the Iraqi War, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Yeah. In case you don't remember. For all our youngings out there who don't remember uh, old timey wars. <laughs> oh my god, I was okay. It was a big thing. So there's a show on the Hallmark Channel. It's called The Way Home, and it deals with time travel. Okay. And there's a character who's a teenager now, but she tr time travels to the past when her mom was a teenager, and her mother is our age. So there's a point where she time travels back to the past, and it's like October two thousand one. So, like, all the characters are, like, in that 9-11 aftermath, and they're, like... They got the yellow ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> there's the yellow ribbons, they're, like, depressed, there's, like, the concert on the TV. You remember, like, that, and, um... Oh, uh, yeah, like, the Friday night concert. <laughs> like, the teenage girl is kind of like, what? what's everybody, like, what's going on? Like, I don't understand. And he's, like, the teenage version of one of the guys is, like... Who knows she's time traveling? He goes, 9-11 happened. He's like, why didn't you warn us? She's like, I didn't think that was something to warn you about. And you told me not to tell you about stuff in the future. And it was just like so awkward because she just like, she didn't get the impact it makes, it made. But like, I also know that from just like talking with my nephew, who's kind of like hyper fixated on that kind of stuff. And I'm like... So, yeah, Aunt Kat's going to leave the room now while you watch that video oh. of, like, news footage from that day. Like, I just can't. I'm like, dude. Yeah, it's, like, etched in my mind. I, it comes up on my TikTok sometimes, and I just immediately scroll. It's like, I just watched that for four months straight. You know, I don't I don't need to see it again. It's like, we live through it. Like, I sat him down. Like, I kind of sat him down one day while I was, like, making us food, and I was like, so... Like, when this happened, it changed a lot of things. And I was like, TV shows took the towers out of their opening credits and all this stuff. I was like, it changed a lot of things. It affected, like, everybody, not just the people in New York. You know, like, it just, if you didn't experience it, you don't get it. And uh, I guess it's kind of like us in, like, I don't know, JFK or something. Like, obviously, we weren't around for that. I'm not that old. <laughs> no, but we are both kind of obsessed with that. We are. Like, surprisingly, like, I am just, like, enthralled by the Kennedys. Like, I, I have books. I have, like, all kinds of books. And I've, like... Like, I'm still fascinated by the Kennedys. Yeah, anytime, like, I come across, like, a new documentary, I just, like, go through it. And I'm like, ah, I've seen all this footage before. It's like... It's... I'm like, I don't need to see uh, Jackie O talk about the Kennedy coach on that, like, 
Right? Like TV special from 1962 or whatever. Give us new footage, finally. Dig up the footage. You know, you know, there's like reels somewhere like in the Kennedy compound right now that we haven't seen. No, like there is like there's literally stuff that's locked away that is not like allowed to be viewed for like another hundred years or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, like no one's going to care. It's going to be like, eh, we knew. <laughs> we knew anyway. <laughs> yes. I'm like, uh. The chicks. <laughs> That's like, yes. Jane Krakowski is in this. Uh, she plays Wanda, who's like the title character. Yeah, she's our victim. Like, she's the one who stayed in town. And in all reality, there was probably a nice guy for Wanda in town. He just didn't have the nerve to actually, like, ask her out. And this sleazy Earl did. And she was, like, not thinking there was anything better for her. She felt trapped in town, so she goes with, like sketchy ass Earl and then he starts beating her two weeks after they get married. They were popular in high school, right? Were they like the it kids? Were they like the mean girls or I think they were like s I don't think they were like homecoming queens or core, but they were probably like not the unpopular kids. I think they were like somewhere in the middle. Do you think they're like Romeo and Michelle that they're legends in their own mind? Is that what you're kinda of getting at? No, I think they're above a Romeo and Michelle. Like Like they're um they got invited to the party. Like, they were actually involved in stuff. Like, they got invited to parties. But then, like, everyone left town and um, Wanda stayed, stayed back and, yeah. I don't know, worked at a bar or something. I don't know what you did. Did they say what you did for a job? Nope. I don't know. I could see you being, like, a server at, like, a... um At the pool hall or something. I was going to say a sizzler for some reason. <laughs> the local sizzler. Or, like, um... A Cracker Barrel. I'm sure that town had, like, three Cracker Barrels. I mean, maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> she worked at, like, not the good one, not the bad one, but, like, the okay one. The one that, like, gets mm -hmm. decent reviews. Yeah, some... <laughs> like, no one goes down to the one on, like, Carpenter Street anymore because, I don't know, there was a rat infestation. But the one on Bayberry, though, is pretty good, I hear. But yes. Plus that wonderful Wanda works there, and she's great. Yes. Yeah, so Wanda meets Dennis Franz, who plays Earl. He's kind of like your, um... Like, he's a washed-up Wooderson. I guess he's, like, older than her. Matthew McConaughey's character from Dazed and Confused. He's Wooderson in 1993. Exactly. <laughs> Dazed and Confused timeline. That's, like, he's at that point in his life. And, I don't know, he lands himself a hot chick. He lands himself a Wanda. Um, she's, like, over the moon. Like, I guess he's kind of, like, maybe he's got, like, some money. Maybe not like he's not filthy rich, but yeah, I don't know. He can keep the lights on in the house. He can buy all the groceries. I don't know. Maybe take her to um, Dollywood in the spring. Like, they're, like they got that kind of money. Like there's there's they're not struggling, struggling or anything, you know? Yeah, she can she can afford to go out to the good restaurant on Friday night and like order the steak. <laughs> so she's thrilled about that. I think that's why she stays with him for a while, you know? yeah. And also, like, my impression of Wanda is she really doesn't have much faith in herself and what she can do. No. And you know what? Uh, her, like, 10-year reunion was probably coming up, and she didn't want to show up uh, without a man. So she's like, all right, I'll stick with Earl. And her parents are probably like, oh, that Earl, he's such a good guy. He's going to take care of you. You stick with that Earl, you know? I want to see Earl's uh, high school yearbook photo. I want, I want to see, like, what we were working with, like, pre-Dennis <laughs> Franz look. <laughs> what he really looked like in his in his heyday. I want that pick. Can we bring up like a pic of young Dennis Franz? Uh, I don't even think oh, I... Oh, I don't know. Like, Let me see. I feel like he always looks like... He has like that George Costanza effect where he just always looked like a 40-year-old man. Yeah, probably. Uh, Ooh. Oh, I mean... Hot damn. He's kind of... He kind of was a fox. Like I'm looking at... Like this looks like his prom pick or something. Yeah, like I just found like an old pick. Ooh, not bad. 1980 Dennis Franz looks like... 1999 Dennis Franz to me. So, I don't know. How old is Dennis Franz anyway? I don't know. Uh, I don't even know. Like, where is Dennis Franz? Where you been? Oh, did you know he stopped acting? Probably, because I haven't seen him in anything. To focus, he retired from acting in 2005. Right when NYPD Blue ended, right? Somewhere around there? Yeah, it's like NYPD Blue ended, ended and he, like, decided to retire. Dennis Franz is 79 years old. That, that, that tracks. He'll be 80 this fall. Yeah, so um, I like it. I can get I can get down with it. <laughs> I want to see what Dennis Franz is like, like nineteen like seventy two Dennis Franz, like what his butt looked like then. Because I've seen his butt a lot of times in the nineties. Yeah, I don't know, man. 
I want to see like in his prime. I mean, that thing was like hard as a rock. You can bounce a dime off it. <laughs> Just fucking fling to the moon. <laughs> did you know he was on Hill Street Blues? Yeah, I knew that. Of course I know that. Of course you did. Like That's what he was known for. And like people were like, oh, he's back in a cop show. <laughs> he did only five episodes. He was two different characters on Hill Street Blues. He was like in the first season or something. And then I think, I think he's like a special guest. And then they actually like brought him back like in the show. He's, he's got that, like, Rob Estes thing going on for him. Rob Estes, that's the name you drop? <laughs> Rob Estes, that's the only name I could think of. <laughs> uh, like, nobody knows who Rob Estes is, except for, like, you and I, and, I don't know, maybe, like, one other person that watches this podcast that knows who, um... Oh, my God. Rob Estes is. He played Kyle on Melrose Place and, like, somebody else in the first season. And he was on Silk Stockings! Yeah, he was the, um, like, that coolly dressed detective i i watched an episode of that the other day it was on um pluto tv yeah it's a pretty fucking cool show <laughs> like it's still pretty fucking cool i'll tell you that. the question is why did my mother let me watch that <laughs> yeah it was like Ooh. i thought it, it was like borderline like porn in 1993 or whenever it came out initially yeah or like, because it was on like what, like eleven o'clock on a Saturday night on USA or something like that. Yeah, it was like from night. He was on from ninety one to ninety five, and then and for some reason, my mom let me watch that, and my mom was like hardcore about not letting me watch certain things. Who we? She probably just thought it was like Miami Vice on like a cable network, and just didn't maybe read the TV guy description. We didn't have TV MA then, so we didn't know. We didn't know they're like they might show side boob or something. Who was? Like, nobody even knew what a side boob was. No. <laughs> we were prudes. <laughs> like, maybe if you had, like, your dad's Playboy that you found, like, you might have known what a side boob was. Or, like, you know, you unscrambled Skinamax <laughs> somehow. You figured it out how to do it. Yeah. That Like, that that's the only time you ever saw, like, a titty in the 90s. Like, now, give me two seconds and I'll, like, I can bring up, like, anything you want to see. Like, whatever you want. It's, like, a menu. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It is super crazy. You want to see Dennis Franz's asshole? Like, we can do it. You know what? <laughs> you don't have to wait till Tuesday night at 10 o'clock. I'm good. It is only 5.30 at night for me. It's still sunny out. I am not ready to see any assholes. Yeah, we're not ready for this. <laughs> we still <laughs> got to do an NYPD Blue. I, You know, I haven't gone down that well since, I don't know, Mark Paul Gossler days. I haven't either. I don't even know if it's streaming. Uh, it might be on Amazon. I, I feel like I've seen it on there. Like, I, I made like an effort to snap a pick in my mind that it was there and that was it but that could have been hill street blues i don't know yeah i bet it's boring like from today's standards it's probably just so ho-hum and well okay so you know i went and i did that like law and order law and order redo rewatch binge that i could with the veil the available seasons of the og and like not gonna lie like first few seasons is so drastically different compared to now Like, it was way grittier, and there's stuff, like, back then that, like, Mike was the young, like, cool, chill cop. Like, he would be the cranky old cop now. Oh, yeah, the little character arc there. It's like, hey, let's bring him back as an old man now. Oh, my God. Let's have him, like, not know how to use the uh, blacklight or something. How do I turn this on? Um, Apparently, Tubi has... NYPD Blue. Okay, good to know. Uh, to be such like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And, like you click a video, and it'll play like a different episode or like a whole different show. Yeah. Like I was trying to watch um Archie Bunker's place one time, and it just like put on mm-hmm. like some other random show, like a cartoon. And I was like, this ain't Archie Bunker's place. Like I've been bamboozled. This isn't what I was watching. I was literally trying to sit here and binge something else yeah uh i get myself do you ever get lost in like pluto blurs pluto tv blurs where you're just you find yourself watching 18 episodes of some show you vaguely knew what it was in 1992 and now you're two seasons deep into it and then you never watch it again <laughs> yeah i like i've done that a couple times with some of those free things um that's almost how, like that's kind of how i got into hearts of fire hearts of fire is the john ritter um Marky Post Show. It's got Billy Bob Thornton, and it is, it was, like, I actually really enjoyed it. It's a comedy, question mark? It is a comedy. It's a comedy. It's, like, the first season, John Ritter's character works for a very conservative senator. He's a conservative guy, and Marky Post is, like, this former journalist who is very liberal, 
and needs a job, so she wants to be the press secretary. Um, and her father is played by Ed Asner. And then there's, like, in the second season, they move to John Ritter's hometown and uh, take over the local newspaper with Billy Bob Thornton. And um, that's where Leslie Jordan comes in as, like, the guy who does the actual printing of press stuff. Leslie Jordan? Whoa, what is yeah. this show? Like, I need to check this out. I'm aware of it. Oh, my. It's amazing. Like, <laughs> I, I binged it over a few days, and it was just, like, amazing. I'll have to check it out. Uh, a lot of good names on there. Yes. It kind of... It was not what we thought it was. It kind of sucks that, like, half that cast is dead now. Yeah. Uh, like, the whole cast. Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Leslie Jordan. R.I.P. John Ritter. R.I.P. Marky Post. Marky Post. Ed Asner, is he still around? I don't even know. I, I'm, like, always afraid to Google this one. Yeah, sometimes... like. It, because I, I always kind of mix Ed Asner up with like 18 other people, to be honest with you. He died in 2001. No, wait, hold on. Let me make sure I'm right. No, 2021. In 2021. God, why can I not do numbers today? You can do numbers never. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's a really good thing there were no numbers on my RBT test. <laughs> um, Speaking of numbers, I was writing a check the other day for some reason. I don't know why. And I wrote the years 2002. I don't, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, no, that's right. Oh, I'm my like, God. Right. Like, it took me it took me a minute to figure out if I was, like, actually, like, right in the air, right? Like, th- like I feel like there should be more twos in this, but there's the right amount of twos because it's 2024. So, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. <laughs> let me be. Mm-hmm. Just let me slip into dementia. I want to be, like, 92 years old, have dementia, and still do this podcast and be like... Oh my god. Is this recorded? <laughs> I can take it out my teeth and it's all gummy sounds. Like gums oh my god. slapping against my lips. <laughs> oh my god. You're going to be like, Cat, where are you? I can't find you in this big mansion in a- Hawaii. Oh uh, yeah, we'll be like on like an intercom, like like hologram intercom system and I can't figure out how to get the intercom to work. <laughs> Even though it'll probably be working half the time and I'm going to be like, Patrick, stop. All right. So Dennis Franz plays Earl, the uh, villain in the story. Yes. Um, he beats Wanda. Um, this goes on for some time. It doesn't really establish how long, but we know it's some time. Finally, one day she's fed up. She's had enough. She calls on uh, Marianne. Well, Lauren Holly jet set. Well, hold on, hold no. She she like fi- she goes to file for divorce and she gets a restraining order against Earl, but he just says fuck that restraining order. I'm gonna go beat the shit out of you, and she ends up in the ICU. That's right. That, and then. That's it. Mary Ann flies in from Atlanta on a midnight flight. Like, f- first flight she could get out to come see Wanda. And, like, they're like, okay, Earl has to die. Yeah. Uh, they decide he has to die, so they poison his black-eyed peas. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. What do they put in there? Do we know? Um, No, I don't. It doesn't say. Arsenic? It's like... Those black-eyed peas, they tasted all right to me, Earl. You feeling weak? Why don't you lay down and sleep, Earl? Yeah. Ain't it dark wrapped up in that tarp, Earl? Uh, and like, the chair falls backwards, and, and he dead. Motherfucker's dead. Yeah. They, like, roll him up in, like, a carpet. Actually, it's a blue tarp. And they, like, drag his ass around town. <laughs> they roll up in one of those painter's tarps, and they take him out. They bury his body, and, like, somebody reports him missing. Like, he probably doesn't show up to work or something. And, like, the cops show up, and Marianne and Wanda are like, we don't know. He's not supposed to be coming here, so... I feel like he's, like, he runs a car dealership or something like that. So, like, like he's in charge, so no one would notice if he wasn't around for, like, two months. And, like... Like, all of a sudden, like, things aren't getting paid anymore. <laughs> like, the, the lights are shutting off. At... I love in the music video that, like, the cops are looking behind the paintings on the wall. Yeah, like, there's gonna be a trap door or something. It's, like, very Scooby-Doo-esque. Well, if you... <laughs> Ladies hear from him, let us know. And then it's like, you're never going to hear from Earl. You're never going to hear from us about Earl. This is a small town. Like, these cops, they don't know what they're doing. Like, this is, like, probably the first murder that... It's not even, like, they don't even think it's a murder. They just think he's missing. So it's like, they don't even, like... Yeah, they're just like, okay, Earl probably just, like, ran off. Yeah, he's, like, he's used to that. Your divorce will get granted because he's not even around to, like, contest it. They probably thought he, like, I don't know, flew out to Reno for the weekend or something or whatever. Like, he'll be back. Yeah, like, even then. He's on, a um, on like, a road trip with his boys. Do you know, I was I was watching this music video, and I was like, do you know what? Like, I really want, like, a more fleshed out version, like, a good, like, six episode Hulu series, like, based on this. <laughs> Goodbye, Earl. I want, like, a two full episodes of them like 
trying to dispose of the body and they're going to like the local fishing hole and they're gonna like tie cinder blocks and throw it in the like the lake but there's like kids out there fishing so they can't go there and they have to like find somewhere else to go <laughs> and it's like everywhere they go there's like people like every time they try to get rid of this body there's like somebody blocking them yeah like i want like that <laughs> like i want like, a whole like story arch s- story arc surrounded that dilemma like it'd be fun well i want to see them open up their stand oh yeah uh they sell what like berries or something i forget what that. they sp- they sell tennessee ham and strawberry jam that was it okay i like it berries like... so they like sell homemade goods and stuff at this like roadside stand little entrepreneurs good for them i mean they were future farmers of america they knew they knew what to do and like it's assumed that marianne went off to college so she probably went and got, like, a business degree. Yeah. She went down to the local bank, and she had her little business proposal. She's like, oh, it's all typed up on um, a typewriter. <laughs> I'm assuming they use typewriters. I don't know. I feel like they had typewriters and not. Do they have word processors then? I mean. I don't even, like, I don't. I don't know what year the song is supposed to take place. I have no idea. Um, Based on the makeup, I'm going to say 1999-2000. So it's um contemporary yeah i mean i didn't know i didn't know this was like a flashback to like when they were younger in the 70s like i, I don't know i don't know i don't know it was definitely not the 70s they get away with murder essentially like we don't have a sequel so we don't know we don't have like because earl had to die da, da, na, 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 na. I, you know what i would love like a uh, one of those like missing persons podcasts to do the story of earl yeah like oh uh, just like this is the story of Earl. He's been missing since, I don't know, August 15th, 20, 2000. I must have said 2009. 2000. <laughs> um, he went out on a weekend. He was married to Wanda. Yeah, like, like just the whole thing and this whole, like, rabbit hole. And, like, I don't know, these, these two, like, white chicks from d- wherever podcasters live these days. L.A., New York. Yeah. They go on Reddit and just start digging up facts and just like solve, break this whole case. And then we get like a sequel song of, from the chicks about like them, I don't know, going to trial. <laughs> That'd be fun. I want that. Like now they're older and <laughs> I just want that. Just give me that, um, Natalie Maines. If you're listening to this, Natalie Maines, tell us. Tell us, please. I want to know like what happened. Yeah. I think there's like a, um, actually, I do think I was reading the Wikipedia page. I do think there is a sequel song, to tell you the truth. I thought I saw that. Yeah, hold on. Let me see. I got it up, too. Uh, hold on. I'm scrolling through it. Oh, there was a song in, he was, Earl showed up in another song that was recorded by Sammy Kershaw. Okay, and then there's like um, parodies of it, too. Like um, someone did like a like a male perspective. Like they did a song from like Earl's point of view, I think. Yeah. There's a goodbye squirrel song. <laughs> that just sounds ridiculously lame. Oh. Not even going to go there. Oh, yeah. Um, in the year 2000, American songwriter and music publisher Dennis Morgan wrote a parody song entitled, Hey, girls, this is Earl. I didn't die. Oh, God. In the song, the girls attempt to kill Earl only left him with amnesia. He eventually comes back and has them arrested for attempted murder while also turning himself in for what he had done in the past. Oh, and there's another one by the Dixie Dicks. Called My Name is Earl. Who's white. It's about a different Earl, though. Who, yeah, about a man, another man named Earl whose wife, after listening to Goodbye Earl and Martina McBride's Independence Day, has falsely accused Earl of domestic violence, leading Earl to fear for his life. This is going to take you back. Um, this song was available on mp3.com in the year 2003. That is, that is wild. <laughs> That's going to take you back, huh? In case anyone doesn't know, mp3.com was like... It was, like, before Napster, I think. I don't even know. Like, oh, my gosh. It, it was where people put their music that didn't have a record label, I think. I think that was the uh, the big So, before point. SoundCloud. Yeah, before SoundCloud. It was, like, the OG SoundCloud. And it took all day to download the songs. Oh, God. You had to get Winamp, which was this, like, clunky app on your desktop. Oh, my gosh. The only thing I like about the old music players that came on your, like, computers or you'd have to download is the visualizations that they would do. Oh, the little, like, kaleidoscope effect. Yeah. Yeah, I would sit there for hours and try to figure out, like, which uh, effect I wanted. Like, sometimes I would want, like, the little 3D tunnel. Yeah, like, they're ta- like that's, that's what I want to see on our YouTube videos, like, that kind of thing. I think I did in one of them. I think I did that. I think you did it to one of them, yeah. Yeah, and then, like, it was a lot of work. So I was like, I'm not doing that again. But I'm just like, that. that's the kind of thing I want to see. Like, 
I don't just want boring lines going up and down. Or, like, a fireplace or something. I keep playing, like, there's no standardized Brandon on our YouTube page. I keep trying, like, to play around with it, trying to find something that works. And nothing ever looks good to me. Yeah. And I, I always, like, I don't think, I have never listened to a podcast on YouTube. Like, I've never sat down and listened to a podcast on YouTube. So, like, I feel like no one out there does. But we apparently get comments, so I guess people do. Yeah, somebody does. Yeah, we get a lot of, like, requests. We got, like, a bunch of requests in the last, like, three months, and uh, I feel like I wrote them down and sent them to you, but... Uh, I think you probably did, but, like, there's... We also get a lot of, like, requests that don't make sense for us. Oh, yeah, like, someone wants, like, an episode of to do, like, Austin City Limits or whatever that show is that was on, like, PBS or something. <laughs> I was like, I don't... Yeah, they're like, hey, can you, like, upload this? And we're like, that's not what we do. We don't do that. Oh, yeah, they want us to, like put a movie up <laughs> like they want us to illegally upload like earth girls are easy <laughs> to like youtube yeah oh we got new comments since i last looked i think you saw these is it our friend who uh keeps having want us to do like a one specific episode of growing pains <laughs> no like these are like it's like this one dude who did a lot of comments on a lot of different things but there's more. There's ones that I hadn't seen before. Is it a spammer? I feel like we get a lot of spam too. We probably do. I, he, I would say he's on the edge of spam. The best YouTube comment we ever got. It was on the uh, what was that Joan Crawford movie we did where she gets uh, gaslit by her daughter. Um, oh, uh, oh my God! What was it? Uh, it's like a horror movie. It's like a hag horror movie from the sixties. Anyway, it was that movie, and yeah, in the episode I talk about how like somebody in the movie walked through like a plate glass window because it was like one of those sliding doors oh and then they're like yeah Della Reese yeah talking about how Della Reese walked through like a plate glass window in the 70s and I was like that is the wildest thing I've ever seen <laughs> or read I was like that is that is gold <laughs> that was comment gold like I every now and then I think of it and I go back on there and look for it <laughs> just to like relive that moment <laughs> oh what is the name of that movie by the way it's like bothering me and I don't feel like looking it up I'm like trying to see if I can just naturally bring the name of the movie to me. It's a fucking crazy movie, though. Oh my god! Well, it's like it might be the craziest movie ever made. Oh my god! It was the Hatchet movie? Straight Jacket. Straight Jacket. That was it. Oh, I'm so glad you thought of it. Did you look it up? I, I just looked up Joan Crawford, and then. Uh, if you've never seen that movie, listeners, you have to watch that movie and then listen to our episode because we have thoughts. We go into it. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, we got a hate comment on our out of practice episode. Oh, hate comment. Tell me about it. Like a new one? Like This is three months old. I haven't seen this before. Like, I'm terrible about checking our comments. I probably haven't seen this then. Um, but this is vapid and mind numbing. It is anything but special. Painfully bad. I'm a huge fan of put of practice. Their typo. <laughs> okay. But sadly, found this podcast to be a total waste of time. These two know little to nothing about the actual show, and instead chatter mindlessly about, well, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Waste of bandwidth, time, and oxygen. Yes, I like it. <laughs> this is right. Like, this might be my second favorite one up there with me, woman splaining to you. Uh, that is great. You know what? I do like that one. I have to go back and listen to that episode. <laughs> um, but I'm really glad that somebody else likes put of practice, though, because I'm... this this person probably had like scoured the Internet for something on out of practice on put of practice. And then, I'm just going to keep saying put of practice. <laughs> and, and what's funny is I probably like the only other person that has watched this show. I, I mean, I, I thought we had pretty good knowledge of the show for what we knew. Right? Yeah, I think. Right? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Mr. at Timothy Williams 8857 knows something we couldn't find out about Henry Winkler and Stalker Channing and Christopher Gortham and uh, Ty Burnell and what's her face, the girl. It's her name. Why am I forgetting names? Though? I don't know. I'm struggling with names. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what? Come on the show. We'll we'll dolly you in. You can tell us. Uh, like, did you work on the show? Were you like a grip? Were you like? Did you hold the camera? Were you um, Jason Bateman's like um, assistant? Did you go Paula Marshall? Paula Marshall. That was it. I'm like Mora. I was gonna say Mora Marshall. I was like, I know that's not it. 
Yeah, I think like we went through like a little. Jennifer Tilly was on it. Barry Boswick. Yeah, it was a good show. Um, they lived on Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket. I seem to recall they ran a bookstore. Well, one of them did anyway. The other one had a restaurant or an inn or something. Dude, you're like getting it confused with George and Leo. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what is put in practice then? I don't know what that is. Out of practice was the one where Henry Wiggler and Soccer Channing were getting divorced. And he was now with Jen Tilly, and they're, like, all doctors working in the same hospital, except for, like, the youngest son, who's, like, a marriage counselor. And they keep having to interact with each other. And we did the Thanksgiving episode, where it was, like, telling this story, where you can kind of see where they were, like, this loving couple, and then you see, like, the descent into how they ended up divorced man i really hope that timothy williams 8675309 does not listen to this episode because i don't remember any of that at all i remember the name <laughs> i remember the name and i remember jason bateman jason bateman was it <laughs> i'm still thinking of george and leo <laughs> ty burrell i remember <laughs> ty burrell <laughs> oh my god uh, but <laughs> I don't remember the details of this show. <laughs> Did I just cast Jason Bateman in an episode of the show? Are you sure Jason Bateman wasn't on this? Yes! <laughs> like, not even in an episode. Like, maybe he was yeah. uh, like a friend. Nope, no Jason Bateman. A friend so... of Ty Burrell. A young Ty Burrell. <laughs> no, no. No Jason Bateman. So this that that was George and Leo. I am thinking of something that we've done before. Yeah, you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I definitely know we went in guns a blaze and like re-researched George and Leo. Maybe put of practice we didn't. <laughs> All right. I stand corrected. I stand corrected, Timothy Williams. Uh, you know what? I agree. I am vapid and mindless and a waste of oxygen. So <laughs> y- you have a point. <laughs> oh, as I take a deep breath, wasting more oxygen. I mean, we're two elder millennials drinking coffee on a Tuesday afternoon evening talking about old TV shows. Yeah, it's nighttime for me. What are you talking about? I'm like, it's dark outside. <laughs> the sun is still out here, okay? Listen, I have been up <laughs> since 5.30 this morning, okay? I was at work at like 7.05, got off at like 3.35, got my kids to eat. Yeah, well, that's good. What did they eat today? Like Kraft macaroni and cheese, the noodle things? Actually, um, <laughs> um, that's actually one of the go-to meals for one of my kiddos. The little cups that you microwave? Yeah. You just add water and nuke it? No, today his mom sent something else and he ate all of it, so that was awesome. All right, um, what are we missing? Uh, we really should talk about um, Goodbye Earl before uh, Timothy Williams has a freaking YouTube shitstorm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I just love the video because, like, the topic of the song is really heavy, but the video plays up the camp of the actual music and all of that. Yeah, uh, I got like um, Harper Valley PTA vibes from this too. I don't know if you did, but I've never seen Harper Valley PTA. Like, no, you never heard the song, or I've heard it, but I've like never seen it. Like, but I get where you're getting the vibe. I mean, I've never seen it, but I know the song. Like, it's got the <laughs> the mom in Harper Valley PTA doesn't like kill anybody, but like it's like it's her like angry and getting revenge. So. <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's like a prelude to this. <laughs> you, like, we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to do it for the for the podcast. Uh, I really want you to sit down. We'll get, we got to break it down. There's parts of the song that doesn't line up for me. I can't. I'd have to like read the lyrics again to remember my course of thinking that I had like 15 years ago when I thought about this. But mm-hmm. it, it'll be good to know. We'll, we'll we'll definitely do it. Yeah. Um. It is a dark song, but I think it's played for jokes. It's yeah. played lightheartedly. It's like um. It's like a dark comedy. I think as they call it. In the streets. It is. Yeah. Uh, the video camps it up. We get like a zombie Dennis Franz doing like the thriller dance in it. Yes. It's amazing. <laughs> and like, it's just so much fun that you have like Lauren Holly and Jane and Dennis Franz in this video. And like, it's a country music video. Like this is when country was having a really good moment though back then. Like you don't know because you weren't listening. Were they? But- like, this is the same era that Shania was really popular. Uh, yeah, like, late 90s, Shania Twain, I feel like we started get Like, late 90s, early 2000s, there's this period of time where, like, country was just, like, really good. Faith Hill was everywhere, too. Uh, um, I was gonna throw another name out there, but I can't even remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's so funny to me is, like, 
So the Dixie Chicks first album, like real album, Wide Open Spaces came out. Like that was my, one of my jams. Like, so our junior, senior year of high school, the albums I was playing on repeat were like the Dixie Chicks, In Sync albums, Backstreet Boy albums, uh, Lila McCann, who's another country artist, um, Christina Aguilera. So, like, in my head, these are all, like, the same same kind of thing. Same era. Cheryl Crow. Yeah. See, I didn't even know who they were until, like, 2003. Jewel. So. Shows what I know. Which, which blows my mind, because we were talking in 1998, 1999, and we would probably have been talking and having a conversation via AIM. While I was listening to the Dixie Chicks. You probably threw their name out there, and I just didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. I just like, or, kept on moving on. you know what? I can 100% guarantee that there was at least one Dixie Chicks lyric as one of my away messages. Too bad we can't go back and look. I know, right? I wish it was like a like archive.org had like saved um AIM away messages. <laughs> Those would be so embarrassing. Yeah, I threw some pretty, uh, pretty. Oh my god, sketchy things out back in the day. I remember, <laughs> like no, but like you gotta remember though. Um, your buddy list is only you didn't have like your teacher on your buddy list or like yeah some random chick from work. Like you didn't like sit down and like chat with like mary ann from work like the 50 year old co-worker yeah no like my buddy list was literally like let's see you steven some randos mariah uh david ryan like susan <laughs> susan <laughs> like who the fuck is susan there's a susan there's a susan i still talk to her once in a while we're facebook friends um there was a carrie and then there were like a handful of other people who like have just vanished into the ether but like yeah it was like your internet friends for the most part like maybe you had a handful of friends from school yeah i had like like who also had aol but like again the late 90s not everybody had it so the the thing for me um especially like early era aol was you only talked on aol to the people that you couldn't talk to on the phone in real life yeah like if you wanted to talk to like your friend from school you just called them up exactly if i wanted to talk to um my friend who watched sunset beach with me i couldn't like it, it cost money to call this person up like you needed a like it would have been like a 300 hundred dollar phone bill to talk to you for 20 minutes so oh my god like for real and like if we called each other on the phone our parents were like why are you calling somebody in another state like oh what are you doing who are you talking to well, I think you, didn't you have, like, a calling card or something? Like, I did, like eventually. A... Okay. But remember, I had a page or two, and you and Steven would page me. Yeah, I don't even know what the purpose of me sending you a page was. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. And then I'd be like, I have to call this number. And they'd be like, no. your parents would answer and be like, nobody called New Jersey. Yeah, I would, like, throw in my fo- home phone number on your page, or you'd call, <laughs> and my mom's like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> like, no. I like, because like, I remember I would talk to Mariah on the phone a lot. And I would talk with Steven late at night because, like, where were Steven's parents when we were young? Like, <laughs> uh, did he have parents? <laughs> did I have parents? I don't even know. Like, yeah. did I don't I... even remember. <laughs> like, what were our parents doing? I don't remember anybody's parents. Like, we were definitely still, like, on that. C- we're at that cusp of the Gen X parents who didn't care. Like, Oh, the parents. I had free reign of the internet. Like, my mom didn't even know how to turn a computer on. So, like, she was like, what are you doing? I could have been, like, I don't know, hacking into the Russian infrastructure. and like, oh. Okay, Matthew Broderick. <laughs> yeah, I could have been, like, playing war games. <laughs> really, I was just, like, I don't know, making animated GIFs of, like, Sunset Beach logos <laughs> to put on my stupid webpage. <laughs> But I could have been doing those oh things. Oh my god! I could have been oh like, my god! I could have like ordered a mail order bride. I don't know. Like my mom didn't know. My dad was a computer guy, and still, like they let, like he let me spend hours upon hours upon hours on the internet as a teenager. Yeah, I, I would <laughs> like every once in a while I'd be like, you gotta let your brother use the internet. Yeah, I was kind of like an internet hog. 
Uh, like my sister. Yeah, no, I was a hundred percent an internet hog. Like, and I remember you and Steve would be like, "Where the hell were you?" And I'd be like, "I had to let my brother use the internet." Yeah, like I, my brother would use it for like thirty minutes, and I'd be like bitching to him, like, "It's my turn." <laughs> He's like, "You've been out of the last like four days." I'm like, "Dude, you made us lose the AOL account. Get off." Oh yeah, I got a term of service tossed. They called it. You would uh, like you go in a chat room about like call someone a cunt, and they would like ban you for like two days. Or like you forward a piece of chain mail and somebody actually reports it, and then like you lose the account. Yeah, that was a crime. That was like an internet crime. Like you can go to jail for that shit, or it seemed like it. That's all Facebook is though now. I know. <laughs> like that's literally all it is. Is all the freaking chain mail, and then it's hilarious to me because. One of the people I'm friends with on Facebook was one of those people who was like, don't send chain mail on AOL. And that's like all they do on Facebook. Uh, Wanda, by the way, in Goodbye Earl is totally a, um, a like chain mail Facebook poster, by the way. She to like she's one of those oh, ones yeah. like someone says like on Thursday, March 11th, uh, Facebook is going to start charging four dollars. If you um, don't agree, like reshare this to your page right now. I don't even know what the point of that is. Marianne is totally the one going, Wanda, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah, Snopes.com de debunked it. And then there's like four other people like being like, oh, my God, I'm going to share this. Uh, yes, exactly. I, I, but what does that serve? <laughs> like, I, like, what does chain mail? Like, is there like an is it just a. Like, there's no, like, change in the money or anything. Like, I don't get what the... Like, I remember I got, a like, an actual chain letter in the mail when I was a kid. I did, too. <laughs> and it's like, you get bad luck if you don't send it to, like, ten people or something. Yeah, I was scared shitless. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I was scared. And I was like... <laughs> yeah, there's... Well, like... Also, who the fuck... Who the fuck is sending chain mail to a seven-year-old? Yeah, I was, like, in middle school. I get, like, in envelope in the mail there's no return address there's just like a piece of paper in there that looks like it's been photocopied 600 times and it's telling me that like i'm gonna die if i don't like send this to 10 friends so i'm like we gotta go to the library <laughs> and it gives you like this list of like all these bad things that have happened to people who haven't shared it yeah <laughs> yeah like i was i totally bought this i'm like at the library fucking copying this shit buying stamps from the little like stamp vending machine no like i remember my mother literally i don't think she's xerox i think she did remember the carbon paper thing where you had to go over it with like the the pen and the roller thing i think my mom did that that reminds me of elementary school and like i every morning they would get to nominate like a student just to walk down to like the office by themselves with a piece of paper make 45 copies for the class and like you use that rolly thing yeah. And then like, it would be me and I'd come back and it'd be all fucked up. Like it'd be like crooked and shit. No, I remember I used to do that with my mom for the church, like the church, like pamphlet every weekend. Are you walking? I, I'm in the kitchen. Oh, like all of a sudden it looks like you're like walking. <laughs> I'm walking around the vineyard. Yeah. Well, um, for the listeners at home, Kat has like a Napa Valley background. So like the, like her, it's, she's moving like she's in a tunnel, but the background is staying completely still. So it's kind of like, it's like a dizzying effect. I, I might have to like take a video of it and, and put it on the Instagram page I can't get onto. The TikTok. All right. Um, what else have we missed on the chicks, Dixie chicks? Um, uh, there, this, this song was controversial. Like it, like they either didn't play it on the radio or they gave like a warning before the song, like warning. This has like heavy material. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I've never heard a warning before a song on the radio. I feel like I've heard it on the radio now. On, like, the country station once in a while. And it's not like they get a warning now. No, like, I never heard a warning on the radio before a song played, though. Like, yeah. I know, like, MTV, it would be, like, this video is graphic or something. Or they'd only play, like, a certain Madonna song at, like... Oh, yeah, CMT totally would have had, like, a warning or something. National broadcast alarms goes off, and it's like, they're going to talk about Earl dying by poison-tainted black-eyed peas. <laughs> and it's these two broads burying a guy <laughs> in the fucking woods or something. <laughs> like, never got a warning about that. And then, like, after the song played, some radio stations would play, like, phone numbers for um, people who are victims of abuse to call up, like, anonymously. Yeah. So there is some merit to the song. I bet it helped a lot of people, helped a lot of gals out there, helped mm -hmm. them get out of abusive relationships. They escaped their Earl, got away, got away scot-free, didn't have to um, resort to murder, but I'm sure a few people probably did. 
I'm sure there's people who probably took this song quite literally. One thing I wanted to bring up, I'm surprised no one like um like just didn't like getting earled didn't become like stand, like the Eminem song. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, is this the original stand? This is like this came out before Stan, right? I think it did, yeah. Well, yeah, the song was like written in the early nineties by the first artist, so okay. Do you think Eminem like heard Goodbye Earl and was like, you know what, I'm gonna do like the tough hardened like rapper version of this. Oh my god, it would be hilarious if he did. Got himself some Dido. Oh my god. That's how you say your name, right? Dido? It's not Dido. Dido, yeah. Dido. Yeah. What a like where is Dido? I don't know. I feel like she had like that song her and Robin had like their one song and then they disappeared. No, Dido had like a string of hits. She had um the song they did for the song from Roswell, the song that's Stan. Um the one about a white flag with David Boreanaz in the music video. And I feel like there's like another one. I don't know. I might have to go look up Dido on YouTube after this. Go down the uh, Dido rabbit hole. <laughs> yes, exactly. WB. The WB like loved Dido. I feel like she was in a lot of WB shows. Like her music anyway. You know show she definitely wasn't on? Seventh Heaven. Should have been on Seventh Heaven. <laughs> Why not, right? Like they, they didn't even have like contemporary music on Seventh Heaven, right? It was just kind of um, yeah. uplifting Church music? <laughs> I can't. I don't even know to be honest with you. Lance Bass was on Seventh Heaven and didn't even sing. That's a yeah, guess. But but like he didn't like they didn't play like Bye 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 or anything. But <laughs> they wanted to bring Lance on as like an actual like recurring character, but because he didn't know what was going on with Sync, he turned it down, and that was like right before Sync went on their little unexpected hiatus. You know what? In hindsight, it was probably a good thing for him. <laughs> Looking back, it's probably a good thing. Oh, yeah, 100%. Can you imagine the shit they would have made him done? <laughs> like, considering what we saw the others do, and the way Jessica Biel ran away. Poor Jessica Biel got fucking wrung out. To... We talked about it. <laughs> we talked about it. All right, um, any last-minute thoughts on Goodbye, Earl? I feel like we didn't really talk about it, so we're going to get a lot of uh, angry comments on YouTube. Probably. The video is iconic. Like, it's one of my favorite music videos. And I feel like it fits with the kind of music videos we, as a duo, are drawn to. I, I always love the good, like, funny music video. Like, a good, like, pretty fly for a white guy. Yeah. I think Green Day had some funny ones. <laughs> uh, yes. It made watching it a second time or a 47th time, like, better. I think it kind of like made you keep watching it as opposed to like, I don't know, like a November rain. Like, yeah. you know, the, the third time you see November rain, you're like, all right, I, I can't go through this again. I can't watch. I can't um, watch Slash be heartbroken over and over. Can't again. watch Stephanie Seymour jump over that table and like cut herself. I think. <laughs> yeah. Walk out. I did like walking and walk out of the church and almost get hit by the train. Though. That was always cool. That's all I really ever wanted to see. Listen to our Guns N' Roses episode. Pretty epic. All right, uh, do we have a next episode lined up yet? I don't think we do. All right, we'll just, uh, we'll just play the roulette, roulette wheel because we're going to say we're going to do this and we'll never do it. So we might as well exactly. just keep it a mystery. Um, you know, it's the, just we'll just shuffle the Rolodex. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. We'll see where it lands. Who knows? You, you might get a, um, a put of practice episode. You might get Hearts of Fire. I don't know. Get a random episode of Growing Pains that someone really wants or... I don't know, maybe a commercial about hot dogs. You never know. You never know. We don't know. We have nothing planned. We are, like, just winging it at this point. Yeah, it could be a theme month. Who knows? Who knows? It could be, uh... It could be a book club. We don't know. It could be Molly Sims May. Who I never knows. That's an excuse to watch Las Vegas. Streaming on Peacock. They don't have the right theme song. I don't know if I... I, I it, it's broken. The show's broken. Oh, I haven't, even, I haven't even started to watch it yet. So. I can't watch Dawson's Creek online because it doesn't have the right theme song. Yeah, that kind of, like, throws me off. It theme song's not right. It takes you out of the world. Yes. It takes me out of there. Can't can't go do it. All right, uh, where can you follow our wild-ass adventures? Kyle Hall said the author. Where can you uh, check check us out, as they say? Okay, a very special podcast.com at very podcast on Twitter, and then a ver- at a very special podcast on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, Tumblr. Um, I think those are all the socials. I think those are the big yeah. ones. I, I think we have like a few like test run things out there somewhere that yeah. we never did. Like our Pinterest page. Oh, you don't think that bad. <laughs> it's not even a page. It's like 
a board you and I share. A cork board. That I can't even find yeah. anymore. Uh, if, if you want to subscribe to our Patreon and listen to like the three things we put on there, you can. <laughs> but we're probably never going to update it, so don't. But you can if you want. You can go to the $2 tier, check it out, and then, then I don't know, subs- unsubscribe, unsub. I don't know. Check out what you want. I think I have a link tree. I think there's a link tree. Yeah, link tree is set up to like everything. Yeah. We have a YouTube page, obviously. We were talking about it. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, one. You have found us, so like us, subscribe. Send us hate mail, because obviously we love it. Yeah, um, I just. We we had a voicemail line at one point in time. I think I think I can scratch that number up somewhere. It's I, I still have the number, but it's just like it doesn't ex- like it's just there. It's it, you know what no one no one ever called it anyway. We never got like even like a prank. I always wanted like a prank phone call or like I, I don't know. like come Something. on people, we gave you a phone number and you guys didn't take advantage of it. Yeah, we could have played clips on the air and like answered questions. <laughs> you could have told us how much uh, you thought we wasted oxygen. So. We would have loved to hear Like, it. you could tell me how awful I am for mans- women splaining to Patrick and all that good stuff. That's on our Tumblr, right? That's where we get all those. Um... That was on our Tumblr. I think it's actually technically still in the, bo- the box. Yeah, I think I've seen it. I think it, like, it's still, un- like, it's not unread, but it still comes up as a, um, like, I get, like, a little number that won't go away for some reason. Like, it just stays there. Yeah. Even though I click it and, like, mark has read 400 times. Yes. It still just tells me I have a new message. I think I have to. Actually, I think we have to actually reply to it. To get we it might have right. to. All right. You might have. I feel like you did. Yeah. Who me. knows? I don't know. I barely go on Tumblr anymore. Yeah. Like I roll in for a few days and then I'm like, yeah, I'm out. Peace out. Like I'll be like, oh, somebody is like liking three thousand of my posts. Let me see what's going on. Ooh. Like last week, from like Sunday until like the end of the week, this person, this random person with like nothing on their actual blog kept liking like thousands of posts i made on tumblr yeah I've had, like i've had that before someone just kind of like like spams i'll get that on like instagram a lot but it's, it's like a like a sex bot so it's not really a person but i'm like i appreciate the effort like apparently it's a real person they messaged me i just didn't reply because i was like this is kind of weird i'm like shout out to that person who's liking all my posts like i don't understand why give them a shout out all right um that's all i got um Peace out, Boy Scout. I don't know. Bye. I don't know. What, did I, what did I used to say at the end of these? I don't know. You always said some sort of nonsense. <laughs>